Today we're starting uh, part two of our message talking about discernment. And on last Sunday, we found out that discernment is not based on appearance. Discernment is not based on appearance. Not saying that you cannot look at a situation from what you see and assess it. If you see from a distance somebody grabbing somebody and the other person is yelling, you can discern <laughs> something right. That's, that's, but I'm talking about spiritual discernment. We talk to church people. And then we're going to go a little bit further into what it means to discern. Amen? Amen. So uh, Pastor Angie and I, we're going to talk to you all for a minute. And... Um, we're going to get some more insight on what it means to discern. And, and uh, we're using Adam and Eve and their human nature to uh, get a better understanding of the, the nature and character and the paradigm and the psyche of man. Uh, Adam clearly displayed that God equipped them, even though I said Adam, singular, that Adam equipped because I don't believe that Eve was any less um, knowledgeable than Adam. So God equipped them with discernment, not only with senses, but with intellect and cognition, which also means a knowing to know, okay? So God equipped them with some things that gave them the ability to know. And the reason why I'm saying that is because discernment also means perception, and that's from the Greek. That's from the actual word used, which I shared with you all on last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Discernment means perception, not only by the senses, taste, touch, feel, see, here, not only by the senses, but by intellect. So you don't have to be stupid because you're saved. That's right. <laughs> or green. You don't have to be green. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Sometimes we, 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 we will do things and think certain ways that we would not normally think or do things we would not normally do because we feel like, well, God got it. God, God is going to make me healthy. And he said, no, you eat right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Then he'll do, he'll do the, the super right. when we do the natural. There's some people that have taken care of their bodies. And, and it's strange. There's some people that have taken care of their temple and still end up sick. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? And then you'll see people that abuse their bodies and do all kinds of things and never get sick. I mean, I, I can't figure it out. But uh, we, we definitely have to use not only our senses, but our intellect when we're dealing with um, discernment. That's right. It also means a moral discernment in ethical matters. Let me tell you all something. You cannot find the word discernment in the Bible. How many people tried to look it up? <laughs> you can, did you find it? You cannot find the word discernment in the Bible. But the, but the word discernment is in the Bible. It's G, Greek 144. And the English interpretation is judgment. So discernment means judgment. It also means acknowledgement. And so again, I say Adam clearly displayed that God equipped them, both of them, with discernment. They had intellect and they had cognition. Cognition means a knowing. Just to know, I don't know how I know, but I just know. Especially we'll, we'll find that in dreams. 
you, you'll have a dream and you'll just know. I don't know how I knew, but I just know. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a realm of knowing. Do you know that the more you seek God, the more you, the more you, the more you know. Thank you, Minister Thomas. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, uh, what, what I'm going to first do is show you some very interesting things about Adam that shows us that he was pre-wired. He was pre-equipped with discernment because of course we know <coughs> Adam and Eve failed from the grace of God, right? They disobeyed God. Let's go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 through 24 and uh, Pastor Angel's going to read that for me. Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 through 24. And you can turn those mics down just a little bit more. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. What did he do? Caused a deep sleep to fall upon, to Adam. Fall upon Adam. So Adam was asleep, right? Okay. Now listen, before I do this, before we go further in Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, how many people knew that God brought animals, all of the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, before Adam and allowed him to do what? Name them. How he know how to do that? Knowing? Knowing. He was, he was in the realm of knowing. of knowing. He just knew how. He, he didn't call a fish a bird. He didn't call a dog a cow. So, so he knew how to name. Everybody getting it? Okay. Now we're going to go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he did what? And he slept. Okay. And he took one of his ribs. Who was he? God. One God, of his see, we got to make sure that we are, we are uh, comprehending. And God took one of Go his back ribs. and read that again. And the Lord God uh -huh. caused a deep sleep uh -huh. to fall upon Adam. And Adam slept. Okay. Right. And God took one of his ribs uh -huh. and closed. I want you to read it the way it says because I want okay. to make sure that they're following and that they're comprehending. Okay. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs. Who is he? God. God took one of his ribs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib, mm -hmm. which the Lord God had taken from man, See? made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. So here we go again. God brought something unto Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, read the next verse. And Adam said, this is now bone. Now wait. I thought Adam was asleep. He woke up. Adam was asleep, right? What's my point? When God removed the bone from his rib, he would sleep. So yes. now God has made woman and presented her before him. Listen to what Adam says. And Adam said, mm -hmm. verse 23, uh -huh. this is now bone of my bone. How did he know that? How did he, how did he have that information? He would sleep when God made, took her out and made her, right? So he, he has, it's, this scripture is showing us that Adam was in a realm of knowing. Why? Because God made it that way. Right? Keep reading. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones uh -huh. and flesh and of my... And he was asleep. He didn't see God take the bone, but he said, this is bone of my bone. Keep reading. And Adam said, this uh -huh. is now bone of my bones uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. Uh -huh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Who told, who told him? We don't have any reference scriptural wise. They said God sat down after he did it and had a talk with Adam. Not saying that it could not have happened. But according to, to what God has given us, it is displaying to us that Adam is operating in a realm of knowing. That's discernment. Okay? <coughs> Keep going. Therefore, verse 24, mm -hmm. therefore shall a man leave his father. Now stop right there. How many people had to be taught how to laugh? <laughs> no, no. 
Was anybody taught how to laugh? No. How many people taught no. themselves how to blink? No. I'm just trying to bring it home. You just know how to do it. See, we take, we take those type of things for granted. Right. Imagine if we had to think and use intellect in order to grow. I told y'all that before some of us would have shorter necks. <laughs> Our ears wouldn't be the same length. It, it would depend on how small well, you we are. we would shrink some parts. You see? <laughs> we, we'd be... <laughs> <laughs> One leg would be longer than the other. I am Ooh. so glad that God just, he just put some things in the realm of the knowing. Our bodies discern through, through the word of God. Okay, keep reading. Verse 24. Uh -huh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Who said this? Look like Adam. Go back, go back to verse 23. And Adam said. And Adam said. This is now bone of my bones and uh -huh. flesh of my flesh. This is Adam. She shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Uh -huh. Verse 24, therefore. This is Adam. Shall a man uh -huh. leave his father and his mother. Now, wait a minute. They ain't got no mom, no dad. They don't have a mother and a father. <laughs> what mother and father did he leave to cleave? <laughs> Did Adam, did Adam and Eve have a mother and a father to leave and cleave? <laughs> now that blends out shit. Keep reading. Therefore shall a man mm -hmm. leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave mm -hmm. unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Verse 25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife. Everybody said they were both naked. They were both naked. Can y'all remember that? Yes. Okay, they were both naked, right? the man and his wife, uh -huh. and were not ashamed. And were not ashamed. Adam knew all these things. He and Eve came, came here programmed with intellect and with discernment, okay? They came here. Now, here's, here's a little something I'm gonna throw in there to kind of shift things a little bit. They came here with discernment. They came here operating in the realm of knowing. Scripture has determine this, but Adam and Eve did not know that they were naked. I'm talking about discernment. They knew all these things, but they did not know that they were naked. They didn't know. Right. <coughs> How many people agree with this statement? God is all knowing. Yes. Everybody agree with that statement? God is all knowing. Yes. Sovereign. Can God learn? I've asked y'all that before. Sure. How can God being all-knowing learn? How can God being all-knowing not know? How can an all-knowing God, how can an all-knowing God not know? Because he don't want to know. To make himself not know. Isn't that something? Right. He can do that. That's, that's powerful, isn't it? He can do that. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> let, let me help you all out real quick. Do y'all remember the scripture says that, that God, because of the evil, the continual wickedness of man, it it's said that, that man continually thought of wicked things. And, and because of that, God repented that he made man. Y'all familiar with that? Yes. Book of Genesis? Y'all familiar with that? Okay. <laughs> then Noah comes on the scene, right? And Noah did something. What did Noah do after he got off the ark? What did Noah do? Come on, y'all, this is ABCs. What did, what did he do when he got off the ark? When he made it to dry land? He worshiped. It's not a trick question. He worshiped, he, he offered a sacrifice, his best unto the Lord. And what did God do? He made a promise to him. Did you all see how blown away God was? 
See, I'm trying to help you make the contrast between the scripture. God was just repenting that he made man. And now here come Noah. God is all knowing. How come he just didn't know that Noah was going to make a sacrifice and then he was going to say, okay, forget it. I ain't going to repent. I'm going to let y'all keep going. Because God blocked out what Noah was going to do. Why? Because we're not puppets. God, God, even though God knows everything, God did not make Noah voluntarily make that sacrifice. And when Noah voluntarily made the sacrifice, what did God do? God made promises. Okay, first of all, let me help y'all out. Did you know that there were not seasons and times? Did you know before Noah did what he did, it could be nighttime for three months. It could be winter for three years. It could be no rain. Oh, okay. Why do y'all think that they thought that Noah was crazy when he said it was going to rain? Look at all of the things that God promised to Noah. Wow. Because he voluntarily. Wow. So you keep thinking, well, God know anyway. Mm. Uh, you don't think that God will acknowledge when you do your best. Well, he know my heart. He know anyway. So he know what I'm going to do. Really? <laughs> did he know Did Jesus know that the fig tree wasn't going to have any figs on it? When he walked up to it happily that he might find something to eat? How many blessings have we missed out on because we have hardly do things for God because he know anyway? Ooh. It really don't matter because, see, me doing, the bit, doing this ain't going to move God. He know anyway. Ooh. Whatever he going to do, he going to do. <laughs> do you know you can voluntarily do something that will make God shift heaven and earth for you? Yeah, sit up on his throne. Do you know, see, I, I believe we would have more enthusiasm in the church if we really believed that we could move, we could yeah. impress God. Give God your best. best. You can impress God. David impressed God. That's right. David impressed God's soul to God sent a man of God to find him in his backyard. We keep thinking if we just out and we doing this and if we passing CDs and if we doing this and if we solicit and if we making sure somebody know who we, if we marketing, if we get a brand. See, that's the way they're doing it now. You can be minding your own business in your backyard and impress God. Oh, my God, if I didn't say nothing else, I just preached. Stop trying to impress man, because if you come here for me, you're going to get burnt out. If you're coming here for Pastor Angie, you're going to get burnt out. But if you come here as unto the Lord, yeah. you won't get burnt out. No, you won't. You won't. Because one thing about God, his promises don't have a shelf date. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. His promises don't expire. His word don't get old. Everything that we know in this earth for him, it gets old, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Except for me. My wife said, except for her, she said, I'm getting newer. That's, right. That's what the scripture said. If any man be in Christ, a he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so the Bible says that they were, they, they were naked and not ashamed. Right. Uh, but also we know, according to scripture, they didn't know they were naked. Right. Okay. 
They did not know that they were naked. Let's go quickly. Let's turn quickly to Hebrew, the fourth chapter. Okay. Pastor Angie, if you would read that. Hebrew, the fourth chapter. When everybody gets with us. Sorry. Maybe one day, may, maybe one day we'll have iPads and all of the pews okay. for each seat. That would be you nice. know, you can just right, pull up everything. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. Let's pull it up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Or the hologram. Yes, yes. That's the yes. word in front of you. Mm -hmm. It just appeared in front of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hebrews fourth chapter. Uh huh. Verse twelve. Verse 12 and 13. Now, like this. now, now, I want you all to say something. I, I mean, I want y'all to realize something. We're talking about discernment, right? And and just to make make the connection again, because the word of God is like connecting the dots. If you don't know how to connect the dots, you'll be lost. Okay, you have to know how. You have to understand Old Testament, New te New Testament, and then you have to understand the principle of out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's right. You can't take one event in a Bible and run with it. Okay, the donkey spoke to the prophet. You know, so donkeys are prophets. You can't, and you'd be surprised. People do that. Yeah. And now you have a church called the Church of the Donkeys. You know, right? That's how stuff. That's yep. how stuff happens. We does. laughing, but it does. It does. So, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses is a principle. Yeah. And so you have to find out of the mouth of two or three different writers mm -hmm. in the gospel that will confirm the other. That's right. Once you find two or three confirmations then God has established a ruling principle. Okay. Everybody got it? Yes. Out of the mouth of two or three, okay? Hebrew chapter four, verse 12 through 13. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking you all through the word of God and connecting the dots. Now, I told you all, we're talking about Adam and Eve because Eve was beguiled by Satan. Adam ate of the fruit, right? They disobeyed God. So the question now is where was there discernment where was their judgment okay and then we laid the the, the 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 foundation that they were that they operated in in a realm of knowing right. they displayed that they had intellect right, right? and they, they had a knowledge beyond seeing their natural right. senses right okay hebrews 4 and 12 for the word of god is quick and powerful sharp and, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of mm -hmm. soul and spirit mm -hmm. and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of oh, the thoughts. Oh, my goodness. And is a discerner. Everybody see that? You following me? So what are we talking about today? Discernment. Discernment, right? And so we just talked about Adam and Eve, and we just saw clearly that they had intellect, they had cognition, mm -hmm. they had perception, they had the ability to make decisions, mm -hmm. to make judgments, God gave them that, right? right. And they operated in a realm of knowing, of knowing right. Right? right? And we also found out that even though they operated in these things, they did not know that they were what? Naked. They didn't know that they were naked, right? So we're using all of that. We're using the nature, the nature of our parents from the foundation to get a better understanding of our mode of operation, right? Okay. Everybody following me? Yeah. And so we're using the word what? Discernment. Right. So let's go back with all of that in consideration, taking all of that in consideration, all of the information that you now have. Let's go back and look at Hebrew, the fourth chapter, verse 12 again. And see from what you already just learned from Genesis, what is this scripture now telling us? Read it again. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick. The what? The word of God. The word of God? The word of God. The word of God? The word of God. Okay, is what? Quick uh -huh. and powerful and sharper mm -hmm. than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. So that's spiritual and natural. Absolutely. It has no limits, no boundaries. Okay. Keep going. And is a discerner of the thoughts. Uh-huh. And intent uh -huh. of the heart. Okay, let's do a little comprehension. What is a discerner of the intents of the heart? The word of God. What is the discerner of the thoughts and intents? Say it, say it out loud. The word, the word of God. Wow. We're talking about how to do what? 
discern. What is the discerner? The word, the word of God. God. Wow. Read it again. For the word of God and is some quick. Peop some people may be thinking, this is not Bible study. This is Sunday service. <laughs> For the word of God is quick mm -hmm. and powerful uh -huh. and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh -huh. piercing even to the dividing asunder mm -hmm. of soul and spirit uh -huh. and of the joints and marrow, uh -huh. and is a discerner mm -hmm. of the thoughts mm -hmm. and intent of the heart. Now last Sunday I told you that you cannot use appearance of a person to discern because the Bible says that you could be entertaining a an angel unaware. In other words, Jesus emphasized and some people think that the reason one of the main reasons why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was because they were unkind to strangers. That was the thing that separated God's chosen people from other nations Ooh. was their kindness to strangers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was on my way to wow. go ahead. You can since you're saying it. I was just it just came to me about mm -hmm. the Samaritan. Yeah, as well. the Good Samaritan. Wow. See, so God is God is very He is a stickler even from the Old to the New Testament about how we treat our neighbors. Love your neighbors as there's some people in danger of hellfire right now because of the way they treat their Maybe. strangers. Even the people on the road that cut you off? Yeah. Oh, wow. You have to be you have to be nice to them. It ain't easy. Woo. <laughs> See, we have we have we have a we have a tendency in church because we supposedly supposed to have the same type of mind and in, in agreement to only try to talk about what the world do. <laughs> See, so when we only talk about what the world do, we can sit up on our high horses. Uh-oh. But well, start talking about filing other people's children on your income tax. Start talking about not being careful what you watch on television. Then you start tepping, stepping on Christian toes. <coughs> being careful about what's going on in your heart. <coughs> See, it's easy. My wife was saying.